it's live is it live <laughs> hope you can hear me well hey welcome back for another what is this um uh, a whiskey chat that's what it is a whiskey chat just gonna make sure it's going live if you can hear me give me a thumbs up or a comment please that will be grateful or i can check for myself hey, back for another... yep it's working hey thank you so much for people who voted on the 8 p.m facebook page i put up a little poll a couple of hours ago hey what do you want me to talk about tonight i kind of wanted to talk about american whiskey because i've been drinking quite a lot of amazing high quality bourbons but um well, the people have spoken and they wanted me to drink and talk about Irish whiskey, which I have no problems with because I've chosen four of my most favorite Irish whiskeys to drink in front of you, but also um, share some stories around what I know about Irish whiskey. So if you are watching it live, could someone give me a like and comment just to make sure you can hear it as well? So tonight we're going to be looking at, um, first of all, well, it'll be a range review of sorts, perhaps. I mean, I'm going to do four whiskeys tonight. I'm going to try and cram in four because the last two nights I've done three whiskeys each and um, that was okay. That's okay. But tonight when I started looking for Irish whiskeys, frankly, and um, I couldn't narrow it down to three. So I thought, yeah, uh, empty bottle. I mate, I don't see any empty bottles here. <laughs> I don't know where you're looking. I'm seeing a lot of bottles, a lot of bottles with not a lot left in them, obviously. But I chose four because I couldn't narrow it down. I kind of got it down to four, and it's like being a judge in a competition, which three I couldn't pick. So you'll see that three in a minute. I'm going to start talking with this particular one, the Teeling Stout. Cool. I actually haven't, um, I've tried it before, but um, haven't done a proper review of this particular whiskey before. And I just thought it'd be quite cool to drink it out of this particular glass. I don't know if you can see it there. There it is. It's a beautiful, this heavy glass. And I've been talking about how, how I like drinking out of heavier glasses. And that's the Denver and Lily. Um, bourbon glass with a solid base which adds a bit of weight versus a um, little bit of the whiskey leaf from last night i've been doing it every night i'll talk about that later but weight not as much weight but today i'll be drinking out of this little teething glass which you can get for free um if you buy the small batch gift 10 they put two of them in the tin um retails for about 75 bucks and um yeah that's how you can get it. Just gonna make sure my brethren on LinkedIn can see and hear me fine. All right, give me a second. Yes, they can. Cool, and there's several watching already. Hey, Kristen. Hi, John Boyle. Good morning to you, because you're in the UK. So this glass, I've never understood it. I like the feel of it. I was talking to three of my best friends, um, who shall remain nameless because they will start a fight. But we, straight after last night's video, I jumped into another video, four of us talking just about life, drinking whiskey. And I was saying to my friend, whose name starts with J, <laughs> I'm sure he's watching, and I was giving him shit about drinking whiskey out of just a tumbler. And I said to him, hey, look, if it's a whiskey that you enjoy drinking, you already are in love with it. You have committed to a bottle or hopefully multiple bottles. Drink it out of a tumbler. It's absolutely fine because you're going to get those flavors and smells and um, all of that charisma. But if you're approaching something for the first time, you know, I call it tool of trade. I mean, I use mine extensively. Something like that would be handy, but it's not a must, you know. Because um, you should be drinking a whiskey however it makes you happy. And if it makes you happy to drink it out of a um, just a straight tumbler, or I don't know what this is called, hopefully Martin, who is the Asia Pacific Teeling brand ambassador, will come along and um, tell us a little bit what this glass means. And it's heavy. I just 
I don't know, it's beautiful. Not a nosing glass, obviously, I mean, because you can almost nose it from anywhere. And a nose is quite beautiful. So if you don't know, just a little bit of background. Um, all Irish whiskies are triple distilled. Most of the Scotch whiskey is not. Very little Scotch whiskey gets triple distilled. And the Irish whiskey being triple distilled by its very nature uh, can be very light and fruity, very easy drinking. And that's what people always say. I drink Irish whiskey because I find it very light and fruity. And that's true. And Teeling hasn't been going, well, it hasn't been revived for all that long. I think they revived in 2015. And I've had the utmost pleasure of visiting them in 2018, in March. I was in Dublin for 40 hours, um, specifically to go see Teeling Distillery. I didn't even go to Guinness or I did go to the Jameson uh, Visitor Center, but there was not a lot to do there. But I had a good time there as well. They really looked after me. But Teeling is where I completely lost the plot. Um, they looked after me. I was given like a full tour. No questions were left unanswered. And at the end of the tour, they parked me at the bar, which is called the Bang Bang Bar, where this gentleman whose name I've forgotten made me an endless amount of beautiful Irish whiskey inspired cocktails. And they were just beautiful. And I had already been in love with the brand Teeling. I like the whiskey. I like everything they're doing. I like how they presented. Um, and I like how, you know, they were there in the past, but the distillery was shut down, but they have come back and they're picking up awards left, right, and center. I'm going to put up a link later on. You can read quite a lot more about Teeling as a brand. But one thing I want to point out right now is hopefully the video will let me point it out. Could you tell that the whiskey looks very, very cloudy? I mean, almost kind of looks like um, this sort of homemade cider. You can see a little bit of residue in there as well. I don't know if the camera's uh, quality will let you see it. But that's happening because Teeling bottles all the whiskey at 46%, non-chill filtered. And the last two nights I've been banging on about, you know, how I like whiskeys that are 46% or higher, but in particular whiskeys that have not been chill filtered and have not had color added to it. Whiskeys don't, don't get chill filtered, have a little bit of natural residue in there. And this one has quite a lot actually quite a lot but also on a cool night which it has been in Hamilton tonight in New Zealand it's actually very cold I was wearing a jersey before but it's very warm in my whiskey room mainly because I'm drinking a couple of before as well but the whiskey is cold you know I picked it up at the shelf and it's quite cold and it starts to go cloudy so hopefully that makes sense coming into this particular whiskey this is the uh, teeling uh, which just started coming in late last year, I think. And this is the one day starts his life in a bourbon cask, but then it's put into a stout, uh, a beer stout cask. Um, I'm not sure what brewery it's from. It might say, oh, there we go. Galway Bay Brewery. There you go, that was easy to find. Chilling whiskey cask, okay, two different my brown Cool, so it looks like Oh, no, 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 oh, 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 oh. go back several steps. Just talk amongst yourselves, please. There we go. What does it say? Where did I say rum barrel? Stop at Irish whiskey. Okay, here we go. So, Teeling, the company, gave their X rum barrels to Galway Bay Brewery. They use it to age their stout. And then the 200. You read for the cast with. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Right. Sweet. So the small batch whiskey, which is the entry level in this range now, they use that whiskey. It's been put aside. The barrels went to the stout company or the beer company. They used it to make the stout and then it came back and they put this small batch whiskey into um, these used. Well, X whiskey, then beer, and now whiskey again. So, quite a lot going on. <laughs> Let's see what it does. Wow, the honey's still there. Quite a lot of it. Hmm. Hi, Caleb. 
uh, high mag and high um, unknown person who somehow can see empty bottles behind me. Um, I don't know, maybe you have some kind of vision <laughs> that I don't. Um, it's a little bit of cherry. Is that cherry? People keep buying. Sorry, I get distracted when people order stock. Someone's ordering gin. Hmm, very interesting. See, one thing I've noticed though is from Irish whiskies, um, there is a distinct lack of oaky character. And I'm gonna talk about all the whiskey a bit later on, but I mean, there is a distinct lack of oak. You know, even some young Scottish whiskies do show a little bit of oak, the little bit of leathery character. But this one, nah, not at all. Hi, Roshan. Hi, Steel. Is that Steve? Hi, Steve. And Roshan again. Roshan, hopefully you're still watching. The last two nights, I've rambled on about how it's so important to actually not drink your whiskey. Don't rush the process. I still have a sip it, and I've been rambling on now for nearly 12 minutes. It's okay. It's okay. Don't be worried. It's fine. The whiskey still be there. Oh, wow. It's changing almost. A little bit of ripe banana. Okay, I'll drink it before Roshan stops watching. Mmm. Note to self. Pair it with a dark beer of some description. That's really good. It's an absolute fruit basket. There's tropical fruits. Um, there's an underlying honey, vanilla. There's no spice whatsoever. No peat, obviously. It's not a smoky whiskey. But it's just a fruit basket. It's running from banana, there's honey, there's vanilla. It's kind of almost like a guava character. Wow. Mm. Quite nice. Nearly made me crackle, nearly. All right, what's gonna be next? Now, you have number three. Let's do this one. So this is, um, again, healing. Part of their um, Brabazon series. Can you see it? Oh, what if I tilt it that way? There we go. Number two in the series. I'm doing a reverse because number one is sherry cask, and I kind of wanted to have the sherry cask later because I had a really sweet whiskey. This will be Swedish, and I want to do the Sherry third, even though that's first in the Brabazon series, because it's a bit spicy, and I wanted to hold the spice back. Cool. Whoa. It's got loads of color, and it packs a punch. 49.5% ABV, non-show filtered. Um, I think this was a limited release. What's it? it? Doesn't say if it's like a limited release in terms of number of bottle, but it's bottle at a very generous ABV of forty nine point five. What's interesting about this one is it's finished in port casks and it's got this beautiful. Unless you can probably see it from there, yeah. So that's natural color. The whiskey's picked up from being in a port cask, and there it is in the glass. Quite rich in color, isn't it? Hmm. Quite rich. It's kind of like plums. Is that plums? Quite a rich, sweet nose. Hmm. Wow, LinkedIn's busy tonight. Hmm. T 
TJ, that's why I do these videos um, to create jealousy. That's why I do them. There's no other reason to do them. There's no other logical reason to do them. It's to create jealousy. Look at this man drinking all this amazing whiskey. <laughs> and he has so much more in the background. That's what it's all about. And I've been doing it for nearly three years. Mm, 49.5. See, it's not jumping at me, right? I mean, it's quite high in ABV, but there's not like an attack on my nose in terms of the alcohol vapor. It seems still quite sweet, quite mellow. Um, there's maybe just a hint of cinnamon, sweet cinnamon. Um, nice. Let's try it. Got to rush it along. Got to do four whiskeys. I do this for a job. Can you believe it? Mm. 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 Wow. The reason why I reached for this bottle, for those of you who watched day one of the lockdown, I started on this one, which is a Glen Glass of Port Cask, 46%. And this is obviously Irish whiskey, Port Cask. Way more oilier, which is bizarre. It's triple distilled. A lot more fuller on the palate. Um, there's a tiny bit of underlying spice, just a tiny bit. Wow. Mmm. Nutmeg, yeah. I was couldn't quite put my finger on it. It kind of like sweet almonds. You know, like the ones you get um with the peel taken off from supermarket. Wow. Oh, that's interesting. It seems quite rich. Like on the palate, it's there. It's lingering. It's making me crackle. I don't know if the mic is sensitive enough. <laughs> it's making me crackle. But I can tell it's a young-ish whiskey. I don't know how old it is. I'm, I'm sure if I did some research, I could find out. But is it youngish? Martin, are you watching? Could you tell the boys and girls how old is the whiskeys in the Brabazon series? And I believe the number three is out. UK has it now. But with all these travel restrictions, um, we might not get the number three for quite a long time. Um, cool. Rolling it along. So this one is technically the first one that came out in the series, which is the Brabazon number one. And it's this one they use the sherry cast for. Again, bottled at 49.5% ABV. So quite a peculiar ABV. Non-chill filtered, no artificial color. And let's see what the color's like. There we go. Oh, that's too much. That will be the demise of me. Because uh, it's about 10 minutes to 10. And at 10 p.m., I'm going to join a... Um, Another whiskey chat, so better pack. That's too much. Don't do this at home. Never do this at home. The glass is quite deceiving. It kind of looks like there's not enough in there, but I don't know if you can tell. It's kind of got like a V. <laughs> I've just probably ended up pouring myself 60 mils of high quality Irish whiskey. Oh, well. I'll reach for the water now. Mmm. Loads of dry fruit, kind of quite nutty. Well, quite dry as well, actually. Loads of it's funny I said that at the start the Irish whiskey don't tend to be all oaky, but I'm getting a little bit of oak. Bit of almond. Bit of sweetness. Looking for that spice. I did find a bit of spice in the past. One thing I'm not sure on is why they use the black bottle for this one and a clear one uh, for number two. Because 
why age your whiskey an amazing sherry cast and not showcase the beautiful colors of it um i don't know because the color on it is spectacular 49.5 percent it's opening up slowly mm. Sweet cinnamon, it's underlying tiny bit of sweetness of, is that cherries? It's making me crackle, I like it, 49.5, 49.5, what does the bottle say? Rich fruit, cherry character, spice, and burnt sugar, wow, it is quite rich, very I don't want to say fruity. Fruity is the wrong word for it because when you think fruity, you're thinking apples, pears, bananas, honey. Honey's not a fruit. Um, but you're thinking of the fresher fruit. I'm thinking of like a rich plum, um, a ripe cherry. Um, I don't want to say mandarin, too citrusy. Um, what else? It's, yeah, it's intriguing me and it's changing in character. Mm. Quite oaky, okay, actually. It's making me think there's an underlying character. I can't quite put my finger on. What is it? It's quite a dry character at the very end. It's still releasing lots of sweetness. A bit of honey at the bottom. What is this thing? Dry finish. <laughs> I already said that. Toasted marshmallow lingering with fruit and spice. Spot on. Highly recommend this. If you are a sherry whiskey lover um, or want something a bit powerful, I think the one before, the port cask, was very nice. It was quite flavorsome, but it wasn't as powerful. I could sort of tell the so the youngness of it, this one's much richer, bolder. There's loads of spice now. It's lingering. Oh, it's lingering. It's very nice. All right, I need to do this before I do number four. If anyone has any questions so far, I've done the three peelings and I'm going to bring the number four out, which is going to be delicious. Uh, if anyone has any questions, more than I'm happy to answer them. Right, what's going on? Seems like people on LinkedIn do not have a job at the moment. Is that true? Well, it's John, sorry. John Boyle. Slow, steady. I can take 30 minutes drinking a great nap adding in a small amount of water to open it up. Perfect, no water here. Try not to anyway. Cool, TJ, it was a whiskey, yeah, it looks young. I love a podcast whiskey. Well, yeah, I agree, Steve. It's such a hard life. I mean, I hate my job. Hi, Diana, lovely to have you watching me for once. I'm always watching your videos, dancing on LinkedIn and all the other channels. Cool. Steve's still there, watching from Melbourne. Hello, I love you. Emoji was good. Sweet. All right. Should we do whiskey number four or just leave it? 
we can leave it. I mean, I've been doing three every night. What do you guys think? When you're bringing it home, look after yourself, please, because um, drinking a lot of whiskey, good whiskey on a regular basis, it requires a lot of discipline. <laughs> it requires a lot of self-care. You got to do the waters in between or got to make sure drinking in a way that I do is you slow the process down so much that you cannot over consume. Um, I think the first night when I did this video, I shared how I'm allergic to drunk people. They scare me and I'm annoyed by them. I run into them quite a bit now because um, I'm hosting a lot of these functions and people get drunk very quickly, very quickly. Um, and I think some of them come with the agenda of that. You know, today I'm going to get trolled, but yeah, cool. So should we do the whiskey number four? Drink, 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 drink. Sure. Okay. Cool. So we'll do this bad boy as whiskey number four, which is, um, well, you can read it. There it is. $325 for that bottle. And um, I just want to comment on um, something. Why is Irish whiskey with any amount of age so expensive? Well, you got to look at it logically. In the sort of 70s and 80s or even 90s, the Irish whiskey demand and industry was just going down, down, down to rock bottom. There's hardly any demand for it. No one was drinking it as much of it. And a lot of these distilleries were closing down. So you don't really see any 35, 40 year old, 50 year old Irish whiskey because they don't exist. And to get a 21 year old from someone like Red Dress, which is one of the bigger uh, brands out there, it's a rare occurrence and that drives the price up. You know, I mean, $325 can buy you something very long age from Scotland, but from Ireland, it gets you this bad boy, which is a 21 year old red breast, which comes in this beautiful box. I like it. It's like a metal plate. Is that metal? Yep, that's metal. Beautifully presented. Love it. And um, I mean, this particular bottle, I don't know if you can see from there, is about there now. We opened it for a tasting with uh, New Zealand Irish Whiskey Ambassador um, Megan Brambury, uh, who's the Jemisons, the Red Breast, and um, Method of Madness, and Green Spot uh, Whiskey Ambassador. And we opened this bottle, and I've been sort of nursing it, but it's very quickly got to there. There we go. Bottle at 43%. This beautiful oily number. It is very oily, isn't it? Look at that. Wow. Wow. Yep, yep. 46%. There we go. Triple the spell, matured in our cast for no less than 21 years. Because you're spending so much with them, they are not going to tell you what kind of casks. They are uncompromising on their quality, which is cool. No, not going to tell me what sort of casks. No, sir. Nope. That's okay. But the whiskey is very complex, and um, that'd be one of the ones you probably leave it open for a little while. But for the purpose of this video, we'll Keep it rolling along. Quite okay. I keep proving myself wrong. There's a very complex, rich sweetness. Um, kind of got like a ripe apple. I mean, I can just sit here for 30 minutes and just keep doing this. And I'm more than happy to do it. No, 
thought I was alluding to and what sort of casks, but no. Very nice. Well, I might as well drink it. I'll rush this one, Russian, just for you. Mm. It's tropical sweetness again. Mangoes, papaya, pineapple, take them all. It's quite oily releasing all the sweetness very slowly it's quite smooth it's very smooth here <laughs> here's how i would describe it it's like eating a juicy papaya followed by a mango <laughs> just this tropical sweetness all over the palate it's there mm. <laughs> I mean, that was probably a $50 dram easy in a whiskey bar of any reputation. What does this say? Taste, soft vanilla, toasted oak, toasted oak, sherry nuttiness, creamy, fleshy fruit. Well, creamy? Is it creamy on the palate? I'd buy that. No, it doesn't feel as creamy. It feels quite rich though. Don't get me wrong. Hmm. Very nice. All right. I'm just going to quickly check if anyone has asked a question. Otherwise, this is it. I have to go and prepare myself for the next video at 10 p.m., which is private, not for public. Cool. What are you guys up to on 8 p.m.? James, I can't do a general review. That will be, there might be just lightning that will come through straight from Scotland, hit me in the head, and boom. Um, we can find someone else to do a general review probably, but um, we'll see what happens there. Look, I'm going to go. Hopefully you got something out of it. There's no script for these. These are totally unscripted. Four of the whiskeys that I like, the people on 8 p.m. have spoken. They wanted me to do Irish whiskey. I've done it. Um, the video is not by any stretch of imagination sponsored by Teeling. I just happen to have a lot of Teeling and this beautiful bad boy in my house, which I enjoy. So I've said it last two nights, there's no whiskey in my house that I do not enjoy. Uh, all of the ones I don't enjoy stay in the warehouse as tasting stock that can go to other people. Because something I don't like might be someone else's 10 out of 10 whiskey. Hopefully you've been enjoying them. Um, like, comment. Please give me some feedback. I enjoy that. Otherwise, um, with better luck, I'll see you tomorrow night. See you. Bye.